Yesterday, the Vikings cut 13 players. Today, they had to make 24 additional roster moves to trim the fat down to the initial 53-man roster by today's 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time deadline. They did just that, and we're going to react to that in three categories. The first being the players that were cut. The second, reacting to the 53-man roster, the players that survived the cuts, and how the depth chart looks at all the positions. And lastly, my personal waiver wire wish list for the Vikings. Two players I want to mention, but we'll start with the players that were cut first. And I'm not going to do a complete breakdown of each and every one, the notable ones, sure, but we'll make sure we mention all the names. The first being Lewis Seen. I've said all there is to say, at least from my end anyway, on this guy. He's the second biggest bust in team history. The only reason he's not the first, he can thank Demetrius Underwood for that. But quite honestly, it's been so bad that all the other players that we have labeled as busts, at least for me anyway, I owe them an apology because Lewisine, his going into his third year out of Georgia, if he ends up finding a new team, Lewisine has contributed nothing. In two years, he's played a grand total of, get this, 10 defensive snaps, and in those 10 snaps, he has one tackle. That's his career with the Minnesota Vikings. I'm glad they moved on. A name that popped out to me, as far as a surprise cut, was running back Kane and Wangwu, King Kane. I was thinking when Gaskin was cut, all right, Kane, he's your RB3, but more importantly, he's your kick returner. And now that he's cut, all right, who's going to be, at least when I found out that Kane was getting cut, all right, now that he's cut, who's going to be the returner now? Uh, Malik Knowles? I. I guess that makes sense. He could be your wide receiver six, I suppose, but he has experience returning kicks in his college days at K-State, but they ended up cutting him as well. So what did they end up doing at returner? We'll just have to see. They also cut cornerback Nashawn Wright, edge rusher Andre Carter II, no shock there, offensive lineman Henry Bird, guard Tyrese Robinson, three receivers in a row here, Lucky Jackson, Ja'Shawn Jones. Yo, Ja'Shawn Jones was abysmal this preseason and I think that's putting it nicely and Thayer Thomas then you get to D tackle Jaqueline Roy unfortunately just couldn't stand out in a putrid interior defensive line room edge rusher Bo Richter this one did hurt me but I was prepared for it based off of the coverage of Bo Richter the last couple of days that hey there's a good chance he's going to end up getting cut he has the aura of J.J. Watt, the the white edge rusher that's that looks like a big bro and gives off, off a ton of energy and has the, the arm brace around his elbow. Hey, he had, in fairness, objectively speaking, although I was hoping he would make the team, Bo Richter had a series of, I would say, moments, like fantastic moments in the preseason but was he consistent, especially you can compare that to other players that were consistent in the preseason? Tristan Jackson, Dwight McLaughlin, no, unfortunately. So I guess he just didn't do enough to make the final cut. They also cut Nikhil Harry, and yo, I think his time is done. I, it, this, is, this is it for him. Like, the jig is up. He was already a bust as a first round wide receiver but to transition from wide receiver to tight end it's like bro you're getting you're getting matchups against linebackers now this is your chance to shine any future if he does have a future in this league beyond today i think if i had to guess it's going to be a practice squad somewhere at best very disappointing i was so hyped when that was announced that, hey, Nikhil Harry, wide receiver to tight end. Oh, hell yeah. Eh, didn't work out. This one sucks. A fan favorite, but I was prepared for it, especially with the performance of Nudie, cornerback Duke Shelley. 
I think if a Caleb Evans ended up getting cut, which there it looked for a while that there was a real shot that he would, then I think Shelly would have made it. But a Caleb Evans, he made the final roster. So did Fabian Moreau and talked about Dwight McLaughlin at the three starters to that. And there's just no room there. After Duke Shelley talked about Miles Gaskin, they also released Bobby McCain, D tackle James Lynch, Robert Tunyon, man, two tight ends. That's two tight ends that I was hyped about. Both of them being gone. Nikhil Harry being the other one. So as far as tight ends, you've got Josh Oliver, Johnny Mutt, and Nick Muse. That is until TJ Hawkinson can return from the pup list. Defensive lineman Jonah Williams talked about Malik Knowles. And then the, the final moves talked about Hawkinson on the pup list. Linebacker Jordan Kanazik is on IR as well as Gabe Murphy. So he made it. He didn't get cut. He was placed on short-term IR, Gabe Murphy, as well as Dalton Reisner. So those are the 24 roster moves that the Vikings made today to get to that initial 53-man roster. Now looking at the depth chart here, at quarterback, kept three guys. No surprise there. Jaron Hall is your QB3, although he deserves to be QB2 because Nick Mullins, I I just don't have time for it. But whatever, the coaches, they made their decision, so be it. Running back, you only have two guys, Aaron Jones and Ty Chandler. So unless they make, we'll see what they end up doing on waivers, but let's assume they don't make any moves at running back. I guess that would put C.J. Ham as your RB3. Just a thought, it makes the most sense. You can't go into the season with just two running backs. That's too risky. But C.J. Ham made this roster, and I talked about actually on Purple Parlor, the show I do with SK and Rap, that the conversation that we had, they actually convinced me. Actually, the way of the fullback and the way that KOC do, does not utilize his fullback, C.J. Ham played in less than 20% of the offensive snaps last year that I was like, oh, man, it actually makes sense if they were to cut him. But he ended up making the roster. Six receivers they got. After Jalen Naylor, your wide receiver three, Tristan Jackson, Brandon Powell, and Trent Sherfield. That that last spot, it was either going to be him or Lucky Jackson, or I even thought for a second Malik Knowles. Talked about the tight end group at tackle after your one-two punch. You've got David Kessenberry and Walter Rouse. Center, you got Garrett Bradbury <laughs> slash Dan Feeney, who, man, he made this roster. I thought for sure he would be cut. And then at guard, you've got Blake Brandle, Ed Ingram, Michael Juergens. At nose tackle, Harrison Phillips, Taki Taimani. Taki Taimani made it. Okay. Not only did Taki make it, the two defensive tackles that I were hoping, that I was hoping at least one of them would make it, the other one did. They both did. LDR also made this roster, along with Jalen Redman. Your edge rushers, there's really no shocker there. The last guy, they've got five outside linebackers, the last one being Jihad Ward. I like that a lot. At inside linebacker, Brian Asamoah, he was on the bubble, and he ended up making the 53. Good for him. At corner, six guys, talked about that earlier. Safety, four of them. Now that Lewisine is gone, Will Reichard is going to be your kicker. Your punter is Ryan Wright. And your long snapper is Andrew DePaula. And now for two players that I am at least hoping the Vikings want to try and kick the tires on a waiver wish list. They're certainly going to add a bunch of players, I'm sure, and make a bunch of swaps left and right. But two players that I'm at least intrigued by. You need help at interior defensive line. That's been a problem for years. A name that sticks out to me is Siaka Ika, D-tackle who came from the Cleveland Browns, or at least just got released by the Cleveland Browns. He was a third-round pick last year. We covered him, actually, on this channel 
as far as the draft coverage that we had saying, man, if we can, worst case, if we can't get any of these other guys, this guy from Baylor, I like what I see from him a lot. A third round pick last year with the Cleveland Browns. The fact that they moved off of him a year later is not great. And let's, let's, let's put a disclaimer out there, okay? No matter who it is that they claim off of waivers, we have to understand these players got released for a reason. They weren't good enough with their former team. So there's always going to be something to say, okay, why are you mentioning this guy? He sucks. No good players as far as impact players, immediate impact players that are, oh man, they're super talented. But we, you know what? We don't want out of the goodness of our hearts, let's say where the the Cleveland Browns, for example, out of the goodness of our hearts, we cannot in good conscience keep this fantastic player, Siaka Ika. We want to share the wealth and, and boost up another team. That's never going to happen. There's always problems with players that you claim off of waivers that didn't make their former team's initial 53. But he was a third round pick last year, played in just four games dealing with injuries. And even when he was out there, yo, I'm going to read, I'm going to give you the scouting report by dogpounddaily.com. They cover the Cleveland Browns. They cooked this dude. And here's an excerpt I have here, and I'm going to put it on the screen. Quote, it felt safe to call him a bust after watching his performance in 2023. Yikes. But the Browns believed he could turn the corner and hope to see that in the preseason. That wasn't the case against Green Bay as he was, again, a non-factor. Despite playing against backups, Ika was pushed off the ball on every snap and was flagged for jumping off sides. My God, which led to the coaching staff pulling him off the field. Another excerpt I have here. Cleveland did show interest in the Baylor product, but they allowed their need for a nose tackle to cloud their judgment. Ika dropped roughly 20 pounds in an effort to prove he could be more athletic, then had one of the worst athletic showings we've seen from a defensive tackle. Once on the team, that didn't change. He struggled to see the field playing in just four games in 2023 after several injuries forced the team's hands. Ika had zero tackles in those appearances and didn't show improvement this year. That led to the decision to let him go, as reported by Mary Kay Cabot. So, worst case, he's absolutely terrible, and you can go ahead and cut him later down the road if you were to claim him off waivers right now. Best case scenario is you get him on the cheap, on a one-year prove-it deal, and he absolutely balls out. Probably won't, but I would at least take that chance. And the last guy that I would like for the Vikings to consider, especially with the current condition of the running back room slash kick returner, running back James Robinson, who just got cut by the Saints today. James Robinson was a beast to start his career with the Jacksonville Jaguars. This man, hold up, bro. James Robinson, that first year that he was a starter in Duval County, James Robinson rushed for 1,000, almost 1,100 yards, has seven touchdowns. And then the following year, he had just shy of 800 yards. That's when, I believe that year, 2021, that's when the Jaguars drafted Travis Etienne from Clemson, if I'm not mistaken. They drafted Travis Etienne, and then after that, they said, okay, we have no use. I think James Robinson really got screwed, but he's been struggling to hang on to a roster ever since his departure from Jacksonville. But this preseason, playing for the Saints, he averaged 70 all-purpose yards per game. As a running back, running with the football, four and a half yards per carry, and he returned kicks for the Saints as well, averaging 24 yards per return. I think this kills two birds with one stone. I think unlike Siaka Ika, because that's just 
hoping that he turns it around. I think James Robinson is a good player. And it also addresses two needs, RB3. It's not like you're going to give him bell cow duties. Sparingly, I think he can still be effective and a positive contributor for any team in the league. But also as a kick returner, now that Kane and Wang Wu is out, I would like that a lot. In fact, if I had to rank them, I probably would say James Robinson first and then Siaka Ika. Any other players that you would like to see the Vikings claim? Again, it, these players are all bad in their own right, but it's all about the right fit. Can they fit with this team? Let me know in the comments section below. Initial 53-man roster is set. We'll see you tomorrow.